Welcome back to complete our discussion talking about temperament in children. Joining me again, Dr. Robert Hudson, clinical professor at the University of Oklahoma School of Medicine. Let's jump in. This has been most fascinating, Doctor, I have to tell you. Thank and you. people do call you Dr. Bob, too, yes, don't they? That's yes, that's true. Okay, so that's I'm going to call you Dr. Since, Bob. Since way back, okay. I was just doing pediatrics. So. Okay, so I'll call you Dr. Bob. That's great. Now, let's look at this child then with the temperament that we were talking about, a little more cautious, takes more time maybe to really get things completed. Right. Uh, would they do well with options, um, whether in the home setting or classroom setting, where they, they can select different options? Is that a good thing, or does that shut them down even more? Okay. In today's society, parents for some reason think that a lot of options are good. Uh, and I think that my granddaughter personified what you can do. She was four. They were about to pick out a birthday present for mm -hmm. one of her friends and they were in Target and her mother kept saying what about this and her brother would say what about this and finally she threw up her hands and she says whoa that's just way too many choices and uh -huh. I think that we can over choice children and the younger they are the more we can overwhelm and lock them up a choice is do you want to do this now or later okay uh, I mean I spent 30 minutes in uh, last summer behind a family of a four and a six year old who we walked into Brahms and they were right ahead of us and the parents said what do you want oh my and this whole case was totally overwhelming okay. and when they and then the parents got angry with them because they were holding up people and they finally chose the ice cream I won't take you through the cones and the toppings no no <laughs> no no no, <laughs> but no so choices should be simple and they should be age appropriate if you're non adaptable or less adaptable that's one of the problems they have. They can't make the choice that's not the one in their head. And that's part of problem solving. And so what we teach the parents, what I teach the parents is how to get the children to recognize choices that they don't particularly want, but that are possible. Okay. And so the, the, the child that just seems to be pig-headed and, and defiant uh, it's not because he's really trying to get under your skin. Right. It's he's having real trouble solving the problem of what next. Okay, and so how to assist in moving that person to right. transition? Because, like you said, temperament is there, but it can be modified. That's true. And, and you can know how and when to modify it. That's true. And that's almost like to me too. Sometimes teachers in classroom settings, when they're dealing with children who are more cautious, etc., sometimes they'll see that as a negative that right. they don't interact. They're slow right. to interact. Right. Well, that is the child's temperament that's right. not a negative in fact that's very interesting that you said that there is a combination of temperaments that are inactive the child is irregular the child withdraws he's very cautious and they're less adaptable and it's called slow to warm up mm -hmm. and the teachers in this and a couple of studies viewed these children as less smart exactly and they're not it doesn't have anything to do with smart the other thing in, in the school system that teachers have problems with is ADHD or ADD. Mm -hmm. And that is activity level, persistence, and distractibility. And it's really four to seven percent of the population. Well, we said that non-adaptability was the greatest driver for misbehavior, and that's 30 percent. Okay. And if you have ADD and you're also not adaptable the behavior is coming from the non adaptability not the persistence the activity or the distractibility so ADD really isn't a behavioral problem okay if you've got a behavioral problem we need to look at the other temperament traits that are driving that now with that being said doctor do we sometimes as it sounds like confuse the two and yes. instead of knowing first what the child's temperament style is yes. that could be what it is but sometimes we take what the temperament style is and right. then we medically diagnose it and start yes. to medicate right. when it really isn't at, at, that you know, is such a good point I think that that we rush and 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 physicians are trained that way I was trained that mm -hmm. way rush to label and if you're labeling a child anything that's going to be lifelong before they're six years old I think that's really not a good thing for that child and I think that you can say well he seems to have a lot of activity uh, I mean energy or he he seems to be a little more distractible or he d is not as persistent and we need to watch that and here are some things that we can do and so we need to teach the child how to manage those things whether they ever get on medicine or not and, you, and, as, and, and as far as medicating the children, I think that we 
we need to have dysfunction someplace before we start a medicine. Something okay. has to be wrong. Uh, if they're making grades okay, then we don't really need to medicate. If they're struggling to make grades, uh, then we need to investigate. But we need to investigate the whole spectrum and look at okay. where their strong points are too, not just oh, he's having trouble studying, so it must be that he's ADD. Right. Let's get him on some medicine. And, and some kids, as you mentioned, who have that type of temperament, just like with adults, who tend to be more at a high energy level, they may need to have more diverse tasks to do right. to keep them functioning and absorbing and functional versus sometimes trying to put them into one little category oh, yeah. and then wonder why they seem to be wanting to do other things. Right, and, and in managing a classroom, I tell the teachers, I say, what do you say when the kids start fidgeting? And the answer is, stop fidgeting. Exactly, sit still. <laughs> and, 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 and I say, no, 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 that's your barometer that you have kept them longer mm -hmm. than they're capable of sitting, so they need some exercise. I had one teacher who kept taking recess away. Well, by the end of the week, I mean, this classroom was just ready to explode. Mm -hmm. And so she said, well, how can we discipline? I said, well, if they need discipline, then have them run laps for part of recess because mm -hmm. they need more activity, you know. Right. Uh, but don't take that, that opportunity for activity away because they really need it. And the younger, the more time they need uh, activity. And that would bring, of course, like you're saying, not only into the home, but into the school where we began to look at each child in terms of their individual temperaments Absolutely. and needs and try to develop the classroom around that, not leaving anybody out, right. but maybe having more of the variety and the stability that is needed for different kids at different right. points. I, I call it temperament proofing the classroom. And so there are a lot of things that you can do so that you're not going to lock up the real sensitive child or mm -hmm. the child that's not adaptable or the child that's not persistent. How do you handle these? And, and you know, teachers say, well, I've got 30 kids in my class or however many, but, but you can do it in a, in a fashion that you're not stimulating uh, a negative response for a third of your class. And that is so true. And I think the thing that you mentioned, too, that it is something that you can modify, although that may be the person's basic uh, way to operate is something right. we need to keep in mind. If parents or, or educators think about that, you yourself, for instance, I'm pretty slow to warm up in an unfamiliar environment because I kind of take the landscape. I've uh -huh. got to see where things are before I just jump right in. Right. So having children like that was okay to me. Right. You know, um, so sometimes people need to realize what kind of style do you have? And if you see that or the opposite, it's right. just a different way to approach it, but right. all, all is well kind of right. thing. And some of the research that we're looking at doing is doing uh, in educator is, is, is doing the temperament assessment on the child that's under a year and the parent and the teacher because Excellent. there's always that interplay. And the more you understand about yourself and your child, then the better you can, you know, have a better fit of what the child's temperament is and what your expectations are. Excellent. Thank you so much, Doctor. And we'll put sure. up information on how people can get in touch with you uh, because this is fascinating. I'll probably have you back for a follow-up, too. Oh, well, that'll be fun. Thanks. Thank you. Well, that's our show for Health Alert. I'm Pam Butler. I'd love to hear your comments, questions, or suggestions for future shows. Please write me at Health Alert USA, P.O. Box 50913, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74150. Or if you're on the email trail, please email me at healthalertusa at gmail.com. And also, don't forget to visit me on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash healthalertusa. Take care. Check out the temperament styles, your own, your children, and realize nothing is wrong. It's just different. Take care. This program would not be possible without the support of OU Physicians in Tulsa.